Brian with GameRoomSolutions.com and today I'm going to talk about our two player kits and then also show you how to get them set up in Windows and then Hyperspin too. I'll have another video to show you how to do it on a Raspberry Pi with Emulation Station if you're interested in that and I'll put a link down there for that. So with our kits you'll get 20 buttons, you get two joysticks of your choice. The ones I have installed on this machine are the Sandwas but we do also offer the Zippies. Um, the Zippies are just the kind of knockoff version of the Sandwas but um, the nice thing about them is they have a really long shaft on them, so if you don't want to have to route from underneath on your um, control panel, these are a really good option. They're really solid joysticks. Uh, we also offer an LED joystick as well. There's a link to all of this in the description, like I said. So what you're going to do is you're going to get 20 buttons, the two joysticks. You're also going to get you a two-player USB board. So you can see here this will handle 22 buttons, two joysticks, and then it just USBs right into your machine. Um, <clears throat> you're going to get a harness here. It's a daisy chain harness. So some of this is the negative. Um, I'll show you here. So we, we sell the standard arcade buttons and you can also see the, the lighted buttons as well, the LED buttons. But on the micro switch here, this top one is going to be your ground. So that's where you'll take these and you'll start daisy chaining those across. Then the other one is is which button it is. So you'll you'll get some instructions or it's on this blog or the website. And you can see there, there's all of the connections. I'll also give you some examples of how to set it up there. But essentially, this is the way the board's laid out. So if I want player two, uh, button one, I would just plug it in right there. That's what would plug into this right here. And, and so I just go around and hook up all my buttons that way. Um, if you're using the LED, it's the exact same thing for the LED buttons. So you can see here, that'll just go in with the LED just snaps. Um, it's the same thing. You, you have the, the ground here and then you would plug that into one if this was button one up on your panel. And then you also have this negative that this bumblebee harness we call it. The uh, yellow and black. That'll, that's what that plugs into and then it comes where it'll just right into your power supply and that'll light up all your buttons. So once you get this plugged in it's actually going to show up in control panel and then control panel hardware and sound devices. It's going to show up as a Zenmo Dual Arcade. If you right click it, hit uh, Gain Controller Settings, you'll see here it shows up as two different joysticks because this is a two player version. If I hit Properties on the first one, this is where I can go in and I can start pushing up, down, left, right, start pressing my buttons and make sure everything works. If a button doesn't work, just check the connection to that button. If all of them don't work, check the ground. So you can see I can come in here and start hitting my buttons. Everything's fine. Uh, they're numbered how they should be when I press them. So I can close that out. Uh, go ahead and test the other one. So everything looks good here. So I suggest doing this just to make sure that you're getting the buttons and everything's the, the computer seeing all of your inputs. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to configure this Zenmo controller that comes with our two player kits in Hyper Launch and Hyper Spin. <clears throat> so, uh, one thing you need to know is Hyperspin doesn't like uh, game pads very well, it likes keyboard strokes more. Uh, so what we're going to do is set up a third party free program called joy to key And what it does essentially as I push a button or I push up or down on my joystick or whatever, it's going to send the corresponding keyboard keys to the system. So um, that will make it to where it essentially sees a keyboard coming into it. So. Uh, what you're going to do is in the in the description down below, you're going to want to download joy to key and you're going to want to extract it to a folder somewhere in a HyperLaunch folder. I think I do it in my profiles. Open up HyperLaunch HQ. And again, I have a full setup guide on to get you to this point. There'll be a link for that in the description as well to get everything set up and work. And this is really all about the controls. So when I open HyperLaunch here, I can go into my general settings. Um, so there's some different options here. HyperLaunch, controls third party. The first one you want to go to is third party and you want to come down here to the key mapper and on the joy to key path you'll want to push the uh, magnifying glass there and find the joy to key exe wherever you extracted that. Uh, the next thing you want to do is hit the hyper launch one and um, actually no you don't. You want to hit controls. I just want to show you this real quick. These controls, so this is for hyper launch. This is the navigation. So you can see here I have it set up to where I can push up, down, left, or right for player one to move it around. The selection key is enter or uh, WSAD. And then on the player two, this is a standard numpad 8, 
two, four, six, and then enter. So for your player two, this is these are the keystrokes that you're going to want to set to it, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, hyper pause down here, you can have uh, the numpad add key or joy two button nine. Either one of those would work. Um, so that's what you need to do. So essentially come into the third party and make sure this joy to key is set where it needs to set. And then double check these for hyper launch so you know which buttons that you're supposed to be pushing uh, keyboard wise in order to get it to, to operate as you want. The next thing, go to the settings tab here. And on the main settings tab, you'll go down. And you want to make sure that on key mapper it's enabled, the joy IDs are enabled. And then this key mapper, this is important, make sure that that's set to joy to key. Okay, so, so now HyperLaunch knows where the Joy to Key program is. What I want to do now is go to Key Mapper. And on Global on the left hand side here, you're going to want to add a front end profile and a HyperLaunch profile. So add each one of those and they'll show up like this. Then as you click on it, you'll want to come down here and add a generic profile. And when you do that, you'll be able to open it up and edit it. And so this is the jointed key program itself. So you can see I'm set on hyper launch. Let's actually start with hyperspin. So I'll just close that. I'm going to click hyperspin here. I've added a new generic profile. So now when I open this up, you can see that there's been several joysticks plugged into this and game pads and so forth. But this first one here, so when I push up on player one, it's going to highlight that. So you stick one up, down, left, and right. So what this is, is over here down the left, this is the quote unquote button that's being pushed. So if I push button one, you can see it lights up. So it'll highlight to make sure that you're talking to it how you want it to. And then what it is, is this next function. This is the actual keyboard function. So if I want to edit this real quick, I can just double click it. It'll come up. It's waiting for me to push a keyboard key to correspond with what I want that button or joystick action to do. So I'll just go ahead and push left again and it programmed it in. So that's what you'll need to do is you'll need to go in and program these functions so left, right, up and down. So the right, the function is the keyboard, the left is your uh, is your Zenmo. So you can see down here on button 9 I have it set as escape. If I go to joystick 2, now remember I don't need all of these buttons configured because this is just to navigate through hyperspin. So when I go to joystick 2 here you can see I have for the left on joystick 2 numpad 4, numpad 6 just like we looked up before um, and then right here, button 9 is Z, 10 is NumPy Plus. So that's how I have that set up. And just to show you real quick, uh, since this is hyperspin, in order to see those, uh, forget that. Uh, I just installed that to do a virus scan, so it's going to pop up periodically. So if I come in here, go to Hyper HQ. So this is for your hyperspin settings, not for hyper launch. So when this opens up here, this is where you can hit controls. And see, this is, tells me how to control hyperspin. So I have up, down, left, right, and then these other ones, space hyperspin. So G is genre, which I use. Favorites is Z. Start is enter. Exit is escape. So I just want to make sure that is. The one thing I'll say is you do not want these joysticks enabled because you're not using joysticks. Even though you are, you're actually sending the... Um, the keyboard strokes instead of that. So under keyboard just make sure that all of these correspond back to how you want these. So you can see here button 9 is my uh, is Z. So if I look here Z is favorites and I have a button down here uh, that's actually labeled FAV uh, for favorites. So that's how that is. So this is how you would set up hyperspin and this will control it. So hyper launch Hyper Launch will go back to those settings I showed you before um, under Global Controls. So these are what you're going to want. The Key Mapper, Hyper Launch, this generic profile here. So you can see this is set up to do those keys. The big one that you want to make sure and get here is this NumPad 2, uh, or NumPad Plus, because what that does is when you press that in the game, it'll actually go into hyper hyper pause, which will show you the the game moves, um, explain the game, different things like that. So that's a really cool feature. Okay, so that's hyperspin and hyper launch. You're going to want to do that first, and then as you've set up your different 
uh, at your different emulators over here. I'll go ahead and hit MAME first. You can see here I don't have anything set up for MAME and the reason why is whenever MAME launches the first time I just press the tab key and I actually configured it in MAME because MAME will handle the joysticks just fine, the joysticks and buttons, so I didn't have to do anything for that. On some of these other ones, uh, so for XBMC or Cody, just to show you here, I have that set up to work. As you can see here, I, I'm just doing the same thing that I would on a keyboard uh, in that program. So again, you'll just make different profiles for each one of these. You just come down here and hit the plus sign and add the profile and edit it. And, and just like I showed you, you'll, you'll hit the button to make sure it's the right button or the right joystick move. And then you double click it and then you just push whatever it is on the keyboard you want that to be and save it. So you can see here I have different ones. There's one set up for each system. So for Nintendo Entertainment System, so you'll add the profile, touch it, add the generic one down here. So you can see there. So now on this one I actually have it set up. So in my emulator itself, which I guess I'll go ahead and show that. So in my emulators folder, if I go down to my Nintendo Entertainment System, I can open this Topia. If I go to Options, Input. So in the input options here, you can see that for pad one, for the left that would be on the joystick, I actually mapped it to the left on the keyboard. And so my B and A is two and one, which will correspond with the first two buttons on the uh, control panel here. So you just want to make sure that your emulator lines up with what you're telling it to do in Joy to Key. So when you're done, as you're opening up these and saving these, uh, different profiles you'll see them all listed here and what's going to happen is when you do a certain uh, action if you launch hyperspin it's automatically going to load hyperspin if you do hyper launch it's automatically going to load that and then your systems as well because we've created them for each one of these emulators here the other thing you're going to do you're going to want to start joy to key in minimize mode so that means it'll start it down in the system tray it won't pop up but you can right click it and say open if you want to uh, the other thing that you're going to want to do, depending on how you have it set up, but just to show you. So in Hyper HQ, Startup and Exit, right here is Startup Programs. You can actually click the folder and you could select the Joy to Key EXE file because that means it'll boot Joy to Key right on Startup, uh, right as soon as a Hyperspin starts up. I, have, I followed another guide, so I actually have Windows opening up that program in Hyperspin without it launching. Uh, so I don't need it here, but just to show you, this is where that can be. When you first install Joy to Key, it's going to do a default profile one. And just a quick note, you might want to go ahead and make that the same as your hyperspin settings in case this boots and it doesn't recognize the hyperspin default the first time that it opens up. This is just kind of a fail safe. Okay, that's it. So as I've configured all of my controls, all my pads, uh, the settings, the general settings, the global settings, all that kind of thing, um, I should be good to play here. So I went ahead and uh, booted into Hyperspin. So Joy to Key is running with the Hyperspin profile, so you can see that's sending the up or the down from that. So now I can hit the uh, play button, which will be enter essentially on the keyboard uh, I have one of these as the favorites or that Z key so when I press it it comes up I can view the favorites again this would be enter just to show you that the uh, it's working so we'll go ahead and select a game here So now I'm booted into MAME, and the one thing I want to show you is when I'm actually in MAME here, I can press the tab key on my keyboard, and that's going to bring up the settings. So this is where you'll want to configure your joypad in here. So I can do general would mean for all games, or if I want to do something specific for a certain game, I would do this game. But I'll go ahead and just hit general. User controls. Um, some of the big ones here, you know, obviously up, down, left, right. But that's for user controls. Uh, the big one here is cancel so if I want to change that to my exit key right there all I have to do is press the enter 
And now it's just waiting for me to push whatever button I want. So push that. Oh wait, here we go. Enter. There you go. Joy one button nine. So I can. There's lots of settings, but so you can configure all the settings. I can go into my first player. As you can see here, I already have that configured. So if I wanted button one, which would equivalent to this one right here. All you do is on button one, press enter, it's going to wait, press this button, it'll lock it in. So you can do this one time and you'll be set up for your entire system on MAME. The other one you'll want to do is I showed you in the joy to key, go in the emulator and set those keystrokes up uh, to that. So return to game. So you can see here I have my money symbol. It's going to add money, my enter. I can hit a two player start here. And so now those are in. You can see those are all working fine. So again, GameRoomSolutions.com. Uh, this is how to set up our two-player kit with the Zenmo board uh, and Sam Juan joysticks. You can buy the Zippies or the LEDs. Um, we have a full setup guide for Hyper Spin and Hyper Launch as well. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments and we will respond quickly. Make sure and subscribe. Thank you.